All right, so we have deviated in our plan a little bit differently simply because we're still about an hour and a half away from Mount Barnett and knowing Mount Barnett, it's going to be full. So if you don't get there sort of before midday, you're probably going to be scratching to get a decent site. Given its state of origin tonight, we have pulled into Imogy and run by the indigenous community. It actually looks like a really nice, quiet park. 19 bucks a night each, hot showers, toilets, camp kitchen and that sort of thing. And a pretty well laid out caravan park. So it's not a bad spot. <clears throat> There's a maybe. They're showers, but I don't know that they're really active showers yet. We'll have to try it out. We'll get go your, over and have a look at it. Get your gear off, mate. <laughs> we'll have a look at the amenity. It's actually a really nice campground. And it's quiet. And you look cute. So that's a gates just over there to get in here. Not too far off the gib at all. Literally just over there. About, I don't know, 100 meters. Oh, nice little chill out spot. Wow. <clears throat> Bloody barbecues and everything, mate. Yeah. This is actually really nice. See, maybe. Sometimes you just gotta look around. And it's another place that we haven't been before. So um, hopefully we're gonna be able to bring you all of these different places, which helps you make a decision on where you're gonna stay as well. I did read on a um, Facebook group last night that um, Bell Gorge or Silent Grove camp area is absolutely chockers to the brim at the moment. So to come here, which is a tiny bit cheaper to camp here at Imogy, uh, we have to backtrack about 30 Ks to get to the, to the gorge. But um, there's like five caravans here, so how good. Actually, exactly five caravans here. <clears throat> Hot showers. It's quite nice. Grass. How's the toilet, maybe? I'm going to the toilet. How is it? It's a flushing toilet. There's a couple of showers here. And all this disability set up too. And there's an ensuite here. So in here there's a shower and toilet. <clears throat> really clean, flushing, uh, pretty much everything you want. So uh, I've got to actually give massive thumbs up to Imogy. <clears throat> Good spot to watch State of Origin, hey maybe? Oh, such a good spot. Are you gonna watch it with me? You're so happy, aren't you? Oh, well, it's an important day. It, oh. <clears throat> and imagine if we were at Manning mm. or Mount Barnett and there were six million vans and we were parked under trees and I was grumpy. Ooh, that would be horrible. <clears throat> Check Plus, this. I oh. have some work to do anyway. You do, maybe. It's a nice camp kitchen. Yeah. So we've got uh, picnic tables sort of dispersed all through the park as well. And what have we got here, mate? These are showers, but I don't know whether they're Holy ready. showers, Batman. There's turn, locks on the door. Turn, turn tap on. You ready? Where's the tap? Yeah. Woo! Yep. Shower works. It might just be cold water. That's all right. Well, they might be. Wow, the shower's everywhere here. That's weird. <clears throat> wow. Outdoor showers, maybe. That's got no tap. A couple of them haven't. Someone's stolen the shower, shower head. head. Hmm. Typical people. I like this campground. It's definitely bore water. You can see um, the corrosion happening. Hmm. Mm. Good day. Eh? Good times. Maybe Good bum weaving. I am a woman, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe don't fill up here. Oh, we don't need to fill up. Everywhere we've been has got bloody showers. Yeah, like look at this tap. <clears throat> There's a bit of corrosion there. Whoa. There's a snake stick there. <laughs> Ready to go. 
All right, I'm hot. Let's get the awning out. All right, welcome to Ant's Camp Kitchen Nightmares. And tonight I'm actually having a nightmare because I was super excited. I've been thinking about it all day. I'm going to make this beautiful lamb casserole. Going to use all of our dehydrated lasting harvest goods. So we were going to use the potato flakes to make mashed potato, tomato powder to build out the tomato flavor in the lamb casserole, thyme leaves, granulated garlic, and I've also got my diced pumpkin in there, which is dehydrate, uh, sorry, rehydrating at the moment, ready to go in the casserole. Jumped into the fridge to get the lamb out. The lamb's in the freezer. And it's about 5.30 in the afternoon and it's state of origin tonight. So I'm gonna default back to one of my other kitchen nightmares and do noodle soup with dim sims in it. How good. which is Manning Gorge, which is my favourite gorge. Uh, and it's very close to Galvin's Gorge, which we'll probably go to this afternoon, which is a little maybe's favourite gorge. Yeah, so you would have seen earlier that we did Tunnel Creek with Linda and Leanne. Yeah. Linda has unfortunately fallen at Manning and broken her arm. So she is now off the, group, off the gib and uh, in hospital. So we wish her a very speedy recovery. Yeah. Poor old Linda, she fell down multiple layers of the falls, yeah. so... Um, anyway. you got to be real careful in those places, everybody. Yeah. These things happen. Okay, on to Mount Barnett. Could have been a lot worse. She didn't hit her head. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. So we've made it to Mount Barnett, which is Manning Gorge. Here we are. There's garbage bins here, so that's pretty exciting because <laughs> we've got some trash. <laughs> we certainly do have some trash. Uh, and you can get a hamburger and hot chips too, so I might just have one of those one day. No. going to Manning Gorge today That's so exciting. we need to go hiking yeah how far I don't know about 5k yeah about 5k we so can? for no 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 I think it's 5k each way no and we've got to go across a river too. So the first thing you got to do is go across a river the little pulley boat that's usually there is gone so uh big swim for us yeah oh it's cold too <laughs> it's a little bit fresh <laughs> 20 minutes she'll be whinging that she's hot. Ready as we'll ever be. Mobo's lost her sunnies, so she's gone to her third backup pair. <laughs> yeah. I have, I think I've left them by the creek Take at Mount photos. Hart. So oh. if anyone finds them. We'll have to go back to Mount Hart for that. All right, let's All right, go. All right, let's go. Hopefully there's a blue container. Oh, then there's not. I oh, told you. There's one. Mm -hmm. Quick, get it. Got it, Mazzy, got it. So there used to be the pulley boat that ran straight across here and she's not there anymore. So you just have to walk across. Mobo's getting the gear off ready to go. She's not 
I so don't want to get in that water. She's got goosebumps already. She's I not do. even in the water. It's actually a little bit chilly this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be all right, princess? Do you reckon I have to take my pants off? Sure. No, you'd be right. Well, they'll dry. They'll dry. <laughs> There's been a lot of whinging about this. Reckons it's cold. It's not close to being cold. Oh. I can oh. see a ledge. Oh. You're on it, mate. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. Done. Done. Good job, mate. She's fresh. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Beautiful, too. Oh, you, oh you, did, you asked me. No, nothing's yeah. in the tub. All right, now. Glasses are on my head. Glasses are on your head, wow. <laughs> Camera's on your back. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so this is an epic walk in. I think it's 5Ks, but it could be two and a half. No, I'm pretty sure it's five. All right, time to go. So as you can see, the track is fairly rocky. Uh, there's white dot indicators to sort of mark out the track and there's a few arrows spray painted on the ground as well. So really, they're all your indicators. From memory, mate, what would you say? It's a class four? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we've done a lot worse, oh, but yeah. it's a long one. We put a rock on here two years ago. <laughs> it wasn't quite as full. Check this out. It might break soon. I think it might. Wow. Wow. There you go. All right. Put a rock on? Sure. There you go. I need to watch my foot in here. Yeah. Shout out to poor old Linda who came through here with a broken arm. Pretty good effort, Linda. Yeah, well done. Yeah, hope you're recovering well. Yeah. Beautiful, look at that water. Oh, so good, come around here. Huh. There and she that is. Walk is way worth it. There's some Aboriginal art just up here too. Is it? A lot of it's worn off. You can see it the whole way along. I remember that one. Oh. I know. Just walk straight past. Hey.
Welcome to Ant's Camp Kitchen Nightmares. Tonight, we're gonna to do our first meal with our Lasting Harvest um, dehydrated goods. So, what we're gonna to do tonight is a lamb casserole. I tried to do this last night, and I forgot to pull the lamb out of the freezer, so we had noodle soup. But, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna quickly show you through what I'm doing. Some nice thawed diced lamb. Just a chopped up carrot and onion here. Again, that onion I half chopped for dinner last night. So we're starting to sort of work through leftovers because you need to utilize all your food on the gib. But what I really like about this lasting harvest stuff, we've got dehydrated potato flakes, which is gonna be our mash to go with our lamb casserole tonight. So all you do, boiling water, some of this stuff, turn the kettle off, add some butter and a little bit of milk or cream, and away you go. Got some diced pumpkin, which is rehydrating, just here maybe. We've got our tomato powder, which we're gonna add to get that real tomato base into our casserole. Some sun-dried diced tomatoes here as well, and some thyme leaves and some granulated garlic because uh, garlic and lamb go together like Ant and Mavo. So <laughs> I'm gonna cook it all down and let it simmer. It's it's lamb rump, so it should only take about an hour on the simmer. Don't have to boil potatoes and mash it and that sort of thing, because we're just gonna rehydrate these flake tomato, uh, flake tomatoes, flake potatoes, and hopefully it all comes up like a beautiful meal that you cook at home, but we're in the middle of the Gibb River Road in Western Australia in the Kimberley. How good. So my little lamb casserole is going along really nicely. I have also added just a little bit of that um, Gravox lamb and rosemary powder, which is like one of those pre-made gravy powders. Um, obviously that's gonna boil away. I'll give it a little bit of thickening as well, but check it out. So I'm gonna drop some green beans. I've got a half used packet of green beans, which are super expensive in WA, so we'll make sure we use those. My, um, rehydrated pumpkin, diced pumpkin, uh, will go in there as well. And then I'll make my mashed potato. I'm just gonna simmer this down for probably the next 20 minutes or so, then I'll drop those extra veggies in, and then I'll do my mashed potato, and it will be delicious. I've just um, drained the rehydrated pumpkin, and I'm gonna drop our beans in as well. So we've only got about 10 minutes to go. And drop that in and I'm gonna grab my beans drop them in as well all right so my little casserole is going away beautifully have a look at this and it's, it smells awesome Anyway, I'm making the mashed potato now, and I'm having visions of, you know, the old Deb. Anyway, this is a little bit different. So, what I've got in, in here is uh, just a cup of boiling water. I've just got the burner on ever so slightly, and I've put probably a little bit more than prescribed, two tablespoons of butter. So, I'm gonna melt that down. And then it's sort of an equal mixture of um, your potato flakes as well. So I've got about a cup of potato flakes here. And I've also got a little bit of milk just in case we need to add some milk to it. Unfortunately, we're off grid, so we're using UHT milk. But anyway, um, creamy mash to go with our beautiful lamb um, casserole. And we've got tomato. We've got beans, we've got carrot, we've got the diced pumpkin, which I rehydrated earlier. All of that beautiful tomato and sun-dried tomato. So we've got a meal of meat and then probably, I don't know, five or six different vegetables. And three quarters of it is all dehydrated. So 
Lasting Harvest will drop in their website into the description of this video and also it'll come up on screen and if you use the code ENA10 you'll also get a 10% discount when you do your order. So check them out, really good small family business, we're not taking any cut out of what we do with Lasting Harvest, we just really like the concept particularly for people like us who travel off grid a lot and um, saves a lot of weight of carrying tins and uh, those sorts of types of food plus it'll last for months and months and months rather than days so thumbs up let's see how this mash turns out um mobo's in making i haven't got a camera girl today she's in making another youtube so uh, she told me to do it myself so apologies <laughs> if it's really shit camera work there she is. Hi, I am here. I'm just working, making the next YouTube. Not even helping me. I know. All right, so I forgot to say with the mashed potato, I had a little bit of salt and pepper as well. So I built it out a little bit more than the packet instructions. Whee. Um, With a bit more hot water and a bit more milk. But. How much milk? Uh, about probably three quarters of a cup. Mm. And that's a lot, actually a lot. Consistency is not quite like your normal mashed potato, but it's mashed potato. Actually tastes really good. Does it? Yeah. And have a taste. Have a taste of it. <laughs> mm. It does. Tastes like mashed potato? It actually tastes like mashed potato. Now check this out. Here's the casserole. I'm really happy with that. And when you actually watch it come out, as long as you've got a bit of protein. It looks very hearty. That's actually a really good meal. I hope that's yours. That's no, heaps. that's yours, mate. That's heaps. Maybe give me less. Because we're in the middle of the Gib River Road. <laughs> you need to eat up. <laughs> Don't be like that. And the thing is, I haven't got any leftover mash for the leftover container I'm gonna have lots of casserole by the looks of this but I can just make up some more mash tomorrow following exactly the same instructions just a little bit less of it so it's pretty good pretty good all right time for Mabo's review of the lamb casserole <laughs> it was delicious look I even used my finger to lick the plate clean she didn't use a finger it was my finger it was a tongue was check it out look at these plates hey. far out it's gonna bump mate all right, here we are. We are headed to Galvin's Gorge, which is Maybe's favourite gorge. Although she said this morning, oh, should we just keep going and forget about Galvin's Gorge? I'm uh, like, uh, no. <laughs> anyway. We're pressed for time. We're not pressed for time. Yeah. We've yeah. got a grandbaby due. Yeah, in about five weeks' time. So it's going to be okay. Anyway... Anyway, um, Galvin's Gorge, you'll see in a second how beautiful it is. Yeah. You notice that we're wearing jumpers, um, probably for the first time in a long time. It's just gone eight o'clock in the morning and it was probably down to about eight or nine last night, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah it was cold. It was cold. Um, cold the van down. next to us had their heater going. Yeah. We braved it and oh. didn't turn it on. We braved <laughs> it in our caravan with our long pants and doona and blankets on. We how still brave braved it. We. It was bloody wow. cold. Anyway. We're going to Galvin Gorge today. Stay tuned. It is mint. Stay tuned. And guess what? I found my glasses. Yeah, she put them in a safe place. I did. They were in my denim jacket from when we went on a helicopter ride. Oh. Just, just so everybody knows, <laughs> Oh, maybe does this with everything. Does it with a lens cap to a camera. Does it with her sunglasses? Here we go. What else do you do it with? You I didn't it? put this on for. She does it with lots of other things, and she's like, "What have you done with it?" And I'm like, mm. "And that's why I can never find anything in the van." She anyway, put stuff found in my glasses. Yay! So you got a Telstra phone box, you've got diesel and unleaded. That's I think it's the first time I've seen unleaded since we left Derby, hey? Yep, and you've got water as well. Oh yeah. So you do catch a few services here that you don't get uh, anywhere else. So um, uh, like Mount Barnett and Manning Gorge, as you saw, 
with our walk yesterday, probably 99% of the people that do the Gibb River Road are gonna stop here. Um, the only thing I would say that the shower, shower's average and there's the hot water lasts till about 4.30 in the afternoon. And there's really not enough toilets for the volume of people that are in here. We're lucky that we've got our own toilet, but there's no dump point on the Gibb River Road. So we're trying not to use it. Um, so we can get through in two weeks. So what do you think, maybe? Oh, it's a great place to stay. It's very busy. Great place to stay, to do Manning Gorge, but um, yeah, if you have- And Galvins. And Galvins, yeah, yes. And that's what we're doing this morning. So yeah, definitely add it to the list. We're back on the Gibb River Road. She's got her boots on. Bit different to yesterday. Yeah, well, it's chilly, right? <laughs> oh, oh, you can camp here. You just can't camp no beyond this point. No vehicles or camping. <laughs> beyond this point, mate. Oh. Oh. Maybe there's some cheeky black cockies today too. Look at that tree. Look at the leaf colour and the flowers on it. Yeah, I know. All right, let's go. How far is this walk? Oh, not far. Not I reckon far. maybe a K. Oh, easy, mate. Oh, my God. Hmm. We reckon that we found some bush plums. Well, I reckon. Maybe yeah. he's not so sure. No, I don't know. I don't know what they're they like are. little kumquats. They don't smell. What did they say not to eat? Probably them. <laughs> no, there was a certain colour. Ah. Oh. Is it purple? I thought it was purple. Okay. Someone's snake clapping. Yeah. You can hear the little creek flowing now. It's a really easy walk. There's a few logs to walk over couple of rocks on the path, but nothing like yesterday. Wow, look at all this. Just like... I reckon this is from the flooding. Look at that boab though. Gorgeous. Lucky it survived. From the flooding 18 months ago. It's pretty much evidence oh, of it in every... Look at the lilies getting ready to open, open up. Because the sun's coming out. Pretty okay. good snorkeling there, mate. It's reminding me a bit of Zebedee too. All right, so we've got perfect lighting. Well, near perfect lighting at this time of day. I'll give you a look at the sun hitting the cliffs and then the waterfall. Check out the beautiful Boab, Boab up the top of the hill. There's the moon getting ready. Sun smacking those cliffs. Right, what a waterfall. And check out that Boab. Look at them zoom. No. Perfect little swimming hole. I can see why it's your favourite. Getting up and coming in early pays pays dividends a lot of the time because quite often you're the only person at these places. To be able to get photos here of this epic gorge with no one swimming in the water and that sort of thing is super cool. How's it going, man? Great. <laughs> Finding a lot more indigenous artwork this year, so here we go. Artworks in the ceiling. Got like two snakes. Stunning. It's obviously a very sacred place that you need to respect. Um, love that it's open and accessible for non-Indigenous people. Um, we just all need to come in and take it all in and uh, leave no traces.
right, so that's why Galvin is my favourite. How awesome is it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, when you think about how accessible it is, it's straight off the Gibb River Road. Really easy walk in with just a few rocks to jump over. Yeah. Um, and just like so, beautiful. So pretty. When you're there by yourself. Yeah, gorgeous. It's just beautiful swimming area. Two amazing waterfalls coming down. The Boab at the top. What more can I say? Indigenous art up to the right. Yeah. Uh, if you go looking there. And there's must be hot spring fed because the water was quite warm. So, uh, yeah, you can't. Epic. Can't really find much wrong with it. So good. How many out of five, maybe? Five out of five. Five out of five. Yeah, tick, 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 tick. Ready, set, go. Oh, that's the water. Yeah, you didn't catch that one. How many hell stars is that such a drill got, maybe? Zero. Oh, nearly. Shit, bro, that's why. All right, so I just did a little bit of research, or actually I just walked in and asked a few questions at the roadhouse. <laughs> so the whole site here, the roadhouse and the campsite's owned by the Kupangari people, um, and it's managed uh, uh, with a blend of uh, people that they're bringing in and also people from the community. Quite a few community people working here doing the gardening and that sort of thing. Just on the other side of the road, community of about 40 or 50 people. Um, so yeah, I, I like to learn a bit more about these places and sort of find out what drives it and that sort of thing. But uh, great operation, open all year round too. I had no idea that it was open all year round. Um, obviously to support the communities around here as well. So um, only open five and a half days a week when it's uh, wet season, but it'd be awesome to be here to see those falls cranking. All right, we're just about to do a river crossing. It is at 800. Oh. I mean, we're about to do a river crossing and it's at 800. All right, we've just turned off towards Mount Elizabeth Station. This is one where everybody that was spoken to about it has said, you've got to go there, it's awesome. So I'm hoping they haven't built it up too much for us. But uh, 30 k's off the Gibb River Road, um, just past the halfway point if you're heading east, I would say, of the Gibb River Road, uh, about 370 k's from Kununurra. So uh, let's see what this 30 k's in looks like. Um, I've got a perfect time, mark, oh sorry, kilometre mark. So uh, when, when we hit 120 k's on the odometer, we're good to go. What are you thinking, maybe? We've booked dinner here. I know, we've already booked dinner here. Yes, very what? exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I'm a little over the gib already. Don't be like that. <laughs> that stretch um, from Mount Barnett to the turn off to Mount Elizabeth was a little bit hectic. Not hectic, it was just rocky. A lot more rocks on the road. This is interesting. This it looks, road's actually quite good. It was pretty wet by the looks of it. Yeah. And so the, the rains pushed the water into the grooves. Yeah, so from Manning to um, Mount Elizabeth, it's just a little bit rocky, sharp rocks, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the tire killer stuff. Not super corrugated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, apart from that, it's pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. Not too busy either. Let's see what Mount Elizabeth has got.
out. I don't know how many k's that was already, but we're at the gate to Mount Elizabeth. Two gates to open. How many k's was that to the maybe. Wow, there's heaps of space. Going to Mount Elizabeth. I keep forgetting where we are. <laughs> Looks really cute. I love all the grass. And there's grass sites. Grass sites. Pardon you. Yeah. <laughs> that looks nice. Oh, look at all the good toilet blocks, mate. You're going to have a good shower here. Hope so. So we're on our first adventure at Mount Elizabeth Station. We're heading down to, what's the name of the falls, Mamie? Oh, good, uh, good Caribbean coming back out of spot. Wala Gorge. Copy. Wala Gorge. Wala Gorge. So. Amazing story when we pulled in yesterday. <laughs> so we've run in to no, a lady that- we've gone to check in. Gone to check in. Will you tell the story, mate? Gone to check in as we've come out. We've seen two go two people coming in, husband and wife, and I'm like, and we, we were like, hi, how you going? Yep, yep. General chit chat. And then, um, and then I've just looked at the guy and I'm like, I know you. I know your face. How do I know you? And it was a big standoff. Like, it was. Hey. Ooh, ooh, I know you. <laughs> Hang on, I know you. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit embarrassing because I was like. <laughs> We, I finally realised who he was, and then I looked at his wife, and I'm like, "Oh, you're remarried." <laughs> Not remarried. She takes her glasses off. She takes her glasses off. I'm like, "Oh, Simone." Lady, she used to work. With I used 25 to work years ago. <laughs> yeah, I used to work with her 25 years ago. She had dark hair, and she's blonde now. She had sunnies on. I so didn't recognise her. I felt like this. Anyway, anyway, to make matters funny better, story. they're awesome people to travel with. Yeah. It's a pity they're going the opposite way to us. Yeah. And the other thing is Andy's got a big zone um, caravan and he literally has like six or seven cartons to last him the next week. <laughs> and Mavo wouldn't let me buy much beer before we left. So we bought him dinner for tonight and Andy's given me a carton. So, uh, oh, yeah, it's happy. Happy, happy days. Happy days. Happy. It's usually uh, happy. Happy wife, happy life. Well, happy husband. Well, it takes. It takes a. Um, just give me a copy. That. It takes a. Uh, Sweet. It takes a, a great man to sacrifice a carton of beer, even though he's probably looking to drop weight. But how good? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right, we'll bring you this gorge. Sorry.
You can't not do it higher. Without a beer. Without a beer. Well done, honey. Part of the rules. We'll have to introduce you guys. This is Simone. And Hi. this is Andy. <laughs> Great way to meet. This is Everyone. so exciting. Well, here's cheers. Here's to a flat. <laughs> it's bloody hell. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, makes it easier. Tastes great, doesn't it? <laughs> Even a dirty old bush chip. <laughs> Fix anything. What a spot to have to change a tire. Ah, yeah. There you go. Have to wait. Cheers. Oh! <laughs> nice work. Cheers. Oh no, you did. All, all right, we're all oh, chopped yeah. here at the front. Wheel alignment's good. Oh, that, that? Uh, <laughs> There's no patch of that. There's one. no patch in that. <laughs> as soon as I heard it go, pss, I went, nah, that's yeah, awesome. Can we not buck it on the way down here and back up then? Well, we've got no spares, so that's not, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so she's on new tire, 1k from the gorge, no more flats. That's what we're asking for. <laughs> All right, she's a bit of a tight track. So these guys here that were waiting for us to change the tire kindly moved aside and we will pass them as we come through. the roll again now Mavo's going to worry about every single rock I've already wiped my hands. Oh, uh, smells like a baby's change table in here. Yeah. How um, good. Must have wipes in your car. Yeah you gotta have wipes in your car. Yeah. Yeah, you never know when you need to do a bush poo. <laughs> <clears throat> Sometimes. I actually recommend low range around here because you want the car just to roll nice and gently. No sudden braking, slipping or anything like that. Just a few nasty rocks. Nothing, nothing epic or bloody hardcore. Check out how dirty ants wipes are. You worked hard, mate. I deserve three beers, aren't you? Oh, that looks really bad. Yeah, I know. That's really good. Oh, this is high pressure now. <laughs> a lot of pressure. It's like in Wonder Boy and you're on your last life and you're almost at the end. I don't like this pressure. Now it is going to cruise. I'm going to go straight over there. Well, we made the rest of the 1K to the gorge so we can enjoy a nice little refreshing swim. Good luck to us on the way back. All right, we made it through the tough section where we lost, oh well, where Andy lost his tie before. 
Now we're eating pizza shapes. I'm oh, sorry, not pizza shapes. Bloody yeah. savoury. Got cheese and bacon. How good. Oh, anyway, so. We're not out of the, the woods on, yet. On the way out, we went low range again and it just made a bit of a difference. Because you're not jerking over obstacles and then hitting your tyre hard on rocks where there's no give. No, we'll just sort of cruise out. How yeah, good a cheese and bacon chops? Mm. I'm going to stay over here. I'm going to slap the car off. <laughs> it's like driving on the moon. This is good fun, eh? Oh, there you go. Give me some bloody shapes. Yeah, good fun. So Maybe's been ducked down under the sink for the last 10 minutes swearing her head off, so I'm gonna just go across and see what's going on. What's going on? I've just fixed the sink. Call me the plumber. <laughs> Here I was trying to, all right, I'll show you what the problem was. Okay, excuse the dirty sink. This part here oh. was coming detached from the sink. So the plastic was hanging down a bit. And I thought, how am I going to make that come back up? Cause then when you let the plug out, your water's coming out the side, not down the pipe. So I was using some double-sided tape, but then I realized there's a screw. So all you have to do is tighten up the screw. Job's done. I've got some pipes that need checking. <laughs> Plumber. <laughs> this is our setup. We're just packing up, ready to head on to Ellenbray. So I thought we'd just give you a bit of a look around. Right, so they've even got rubbish bins here at Mount Elizabeth, which is awesome. Especially on the gib. So they say this is the purest water on the gib. They do say it's the purest water on the gib. So we definitely want some of this good gear. <laughs> you love the good gear, don't you, Mimi? I do. She went to Richmond River. Full of good oh. gear there. Oh. <laughs> now, now. Do you like that one? Anyway. I'm going to try and attempt to get it in with me real short hose. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. No filter, mate. Because it's the good gear. Yep. I'm getting a wide shot of how sexy I look today. Oh, Jesus. So after filling up with some of the best, or the best water on the Gibb River Road, we're just going to go and check out these toilets. Um, I'd also say, so far, anyway, and we're off to Ellenbray today, but so far today, to, to date, this, these are the best ablutions that we've found. Um, I think ablution's a WA word, it's just a toilet block. Got a little camp kitchen over there with a big gas barbecue. And then you've got gas hot water, so you're never running out of it. Six toilets? Oh, the intersex. Six showers, laundry. They cost six bucks for a load. Everything's in sixes here. Anyway, great spot. Really well maintained, really clean, really good water pressure, good hot water. So yeah, it's really all you need when you're in a place like this. So we've obviously got the ensuite in the van, but we don't want to use all of our water. Um, because it's pretty precious commodity on the Gibbs, so to have these facilities is uh, just another tick in the box for Mount Elizabeth Station. Quick sticky beak of what the homestead and restaurant look like. Starlink Wi-Fi, campfire, the original truck that the original owners came through Sorry. in. I'll give you to maybe now because I'm driving a caravan. 
Yeah, apparently the original owners are the Lacey's. So they had it, I think, for three generations? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. They're buried here. Um, but they came in on this vehicle coming up. Like, amazing, really, when you think about it. Would have taken them so long. So at Mount Elizabeth, the road used to cut in um, on the Columbaroo Road. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And it took you to Walcott's Inlet too, apparently, which uh, is a pity that you can't still get there by, by road. Yeah, it used to take seven days just to get over to Mount Elizabeth from the Columbaroo Road. Alright, so time for the big wrap up of Mount Elizabeth Station. You've already seen lots of the things we love. Great ablutions, awesome water, great campsites where you can either get really shaded if you want or you can get really full sun sites with really good starling positioning as well. Um, dinner last night and the night before, we, yes we had dinner here twice, $40 a head. The no, one night we had uh, eye fillet beef. Uh, tenderloin, uh, potato bake, a, um, it was like a zucchini, zucchini bake, bake, and tomato oh, base. It so was yummy. just beautiful home cooked food. Um, it's cheaper than a pub feed back at Brisbane. Um, and their in the middle of nowhere, and the dessert. Yeah, we had sticky date pudding with ginger in it last night. Um, so good. So you know, I, I just think you can't go wrong. The 30k deviation off the Gibb River Road may put some people off. The road's not bad. A um, couple of little water crossings that aren't, aren't hectic at all, but it's so worth it. Make sure you get up to these stations. We've noticed with both, both Mount Hart, 50k's off, Mount Elizabeth, 30k's off the Gibb River Road, they've gone out of their way to make it a great experience. The last thing I'll say, we, we were really lucky last night. We actually got to sit next to the Burton family while we were at, who are the owners now of the station. They've only taken it over in the last 18 months or so. No, four years. Four years, oh, four yeah. years is it? Four there years. you go. But running the station the last, this is their second Correct, season. yeah, so yep. that's where I got the 18 months from. Yep. So they were telling us a story, a lot of the negative media around the Kimberley at the moment is the um, traditional owners. And they had nothing bad to say whatsoever about what's happening with the um, traditional owners of the land and that sort of thing, because they all work together. What they were telling us a story of is billionaires and corporate takeovers of these places where they're bringing in massively highly paid executives and things like that who've got absolutely no idea of running a station, running an abattoir in the Kimberley, all of those sorts of things, and they're just falling apart and they're not economically viable within you know, one to two years of taking over. So these guys consider themselves really lucky to have, have, have bought this station off back off the Chinese back off the so Chinese. they leased it from the Chinese and then they very quietly thank goodness were able to purchase it without it without it going on, on the, the market. market yeah which is so good so that's the other reason I think that if you do, do get an opportunity get off the Gib River Road and get up to Mount Elizabeth station because family owned you don't see that very often anymore yeah they're certainly not billionaires but I think they're you know, done a great job with what they're doing because they know what they're doing. Yeah. So, um, and they love what they're doing yeah, as well. So, yeah. Yeah. even Snowy, the bloke that runs the campground, sitting around the fire with the big communal fire pit, his wife in the kitchen, I can't remember her name, apologies. I've already raved about how good the food was. So, uh, we're talking a lot, but yeah. it was such a good experience. So, get yourself up to Mount Elizabeth, get yourself up to Mount Hart. We're on to Ellenbray now. So, um, we were going to have a quiet morning and then maybe dropped it on me about nine o'clock that we were going to move on. Um, today's going to be the biggest drive yeah. so far on the Gibb River Road and then we're on to uh, Home Valley after that. So we're going to break that four and a half, five hour drive up uh, by going to Ellenbrae for the night. Yep. See you with some scones and a toasted sandwich. 